Live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, great. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for the Splunk Conference, Dot Conference 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. Join with Jeff Kelly, the number one big data analyst at Wikibon.org. Our next guest is uh, Harvey Tesler, the co-founder of uh, SyncSword. Welcome to theCUBE. We've had you guys on many times. Uh, great to see you. Thanks, John. Thanks, Jeff. So give us the update. So SyncSort, um, ironically, I was just having a crowd chat this morning with Catalogic, which I said, I've never heard of you guys before. Um, you got a startup? And it turns out that's your technology. Yes. So yes. what ironic, <laughs> ironic today. So We're all over the place. You guys are everywhere. <laughs> and you got, of course, you've been around for, you guys have been around yeah. for a long time, very successful. Give us the update. What's going on with SyncSort? Why are you here? We're here because um, uh, there are many mainframe customers that are trying to get uh, trying to get data into, uh, into Splunk, uh, and they're trying to get the mainframe data in. And what's happened is uh, they have this great view of their, their data, operational data, their security data in Splunk, but it doesn't cover the mainframe systems. And so somebody's saying, well, well we don't have the whole picture here. Why do we want to have a separate uh, monitor or, or separate way of collecting that, why can't we put it all on one screen? So we started going to our mainframe customers who know us for many, many years. We've got more than half of the mainframe market uh, on ZOS. So those mainframe customers trust us uh, and, you know, are you going to put software on our ZOS system? Yes, we are and you know that we're good at it and we have the relationships. And now we're able to pull down real time uh, machine data from ZOS into Splunk so that a transaction that may be an ATM swipe or a package delivery that's starting out on a distributed system but makes its round trip through DB2 on ZOS, if someone's looking at the screen and say, why did that transaction take 20 seconds? It's because there was some problem on the DB2 side and right now they call the mainframe guy and he says, I'll get to that by tonight and let yeah, you know. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, if he gets so, to it that fast. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so you guys are bringing this Splunk to basically the mainframe market. Yes. That's mainly the big deal. Yes. And that's the big deal. And this, is new, this isn't new for you in terms of bringing mainframe data, unlocking mainframe data, so you do this with Hadoop. Yes. And now you're doing, so, so we think of Hadoop more as that more large scale historical analysis, where Splunk is more of the real time type of capability. Exactly right. Exactly. Right. So, is, are those the two kind of use cases you're seeing for those two different markets? Yes. Although ultimately, uh, we were talking to a large New York financial institution on uh, last week, and they want the real data real time. I mean, that's really a, a big difference. But they're saying, you know what? If we can keep lots of historical data mm -hmm. into in Splunk, we can then. When something's taking three seconds, they can say, well, what was it a week ago? What was it last month? What was it six months ago? What are the patterns here? And, I, and you know, Splunk is delivering more and more analytics so that those patterns can be easily recognized. And you know, there are already monitors, uh, systems on ZOS, but Splunk gives them a new dimension of historical data and real, and real time that matches with the other systems that they're Mm -hmm. uh, other transaction systems that I mentioned earlier, but package delivery and ATM and uh, credit card swipes and, 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 and retail transactions. Mm -hmm. So let's take a step back, add a little context. Some of our viewers might be watching and saying mainframes, or who's using mainframes anymore? But there's quite a few, isn't there? I mean, there's the demise of the mainframe was, was predicted <laughs> quite a few times and it just hasn't happened. It's still a steady business for IBM, isn't it? Yes, and the, the MIPS that IBM has in ZOS grows every year. It's not growing at 50% a year, it's not growing at 30% a year, but it is growing at 10% at, at a year. And you might say, well, who's buying these MIPS? Well, it's mostly the, the existing footprints that they have, mm -hmm. and even though there's pressure to, uh, to hold down those costs, 
a lot of those MIPS are on WebSphere app applications, uh, Z Linux applications, but there's still a ton of data that's the data of record mm -hmm. uh, for uh, almost all the large banks around the world, insurance companies, financial institutions, uh, all the credit card companies, all the package delivery companies, all the re uh, big retail companies, all the data, important data and transactional data is on the, on the mainframe. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this, this gets back to a conversation we were having with Steve Summer earlier about the importance of, you know, when we think about big data, it's not just new sources of data, which are important, but it's about bringing in legacy data sources, for lack of a better term, and integrating those in a way that you can correlate patterns among, uh, based on all of the data at your disposal. And it sounds like that's something where SyncSort can come in and actually help you get data to where it needs to be so you can do this analysis. The, you know, if you think about the mainframe and uh, the ZOS operating system, it, I think it just had its 50th anniversary, and uh, I guess I could say that I was near the start of that. <laughs> uh, but in any case, so if you think about an application that was collecting machine data back in uh, 1964, so it was probably a small amount. We want to know when a job starts, when a job ends, how much resource did it use as far as CPU time. So, but now you have a whole department of developers that are responsible for that. So well, next year maybe we'll add another piece of information about that job and another piece. So it's got 50 years of adding more and more granularity and richness to that mainframe data. And that data, to, to a large extent, is being utilized today with some of the larger uh, mainframe companies that sell products, but it's not, it, it's too much data to kind of keep for a long history, and it goes into the, the, the big data that Splunk gives you, mm -hmm. and you can get more historical information from it, and I think that as, as people start putting more and more mainframe data into Splunk, they're going to say, wow, we could do that, and we can we can we can uh, add to our security. Uh, we can enhance our security. We can enhance our operational health management and our problem resolution. Well, that's going to be my next question. So, what are the real business problems, the business yeah. challenges that people are solving uh, now, or they can solve now that they're able to bring data out from the mainframe into their Splunk environments? Well, there's there's one. Um, there's one source of, of, of uh, data on the mainframe, it's the operator console. Now, in, in ZOS language, it's called syslog, although syslog has another meaning on the, on the distributed side. So one of our customers came to us and said, we have, app, multi, we have multiple applications that can be using the same DB2 database. If that DB2 table is deadlocked, because two applications are trying to access it at the same time, then we have that application then stops. So we want a real-time alert that's on the same screen as the application performance monitor for that application. So when the application is stopping, it's because of the mainframe, they'll, they'll um, uh, get that. Another customer is looking at, they know that they've designed their, uh, let's say their, their web application for customers to be able to handle um, 50,000 transactions or 50,000 logons a second or uh, web hits. And the, they want a monitor that's going to be able to uh, tell them how close they are getting to that, to that logon uh, threshold as well as the, the latency mm -hmm. for each of those. Uh, so it's performance and performance management on a real-time basis. Mm -hmm. And that's just not something they could get with the traditional tools that allow them to monitor their environments? Not, not really. I mean, there's a lot of the traditional tools that tell you, well, your CPU is 98% utilized, mm -hmm. uh, or this DB2 region is being, uh, is overtaxed. But the individual applications, those are the, those are the areas that they're trying to look at so that the business users can now know exactly what's happening with their, mm -hmm. with their, Harvey, I want to, I want to um, get your take. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Sure. Um, 
you guys own the mainframe market. Um, we're very familiar with you guys. Um, we're getting um, hooked on time here. So Sorry. I want to give you the final word. Share with the folks out there how dominant you guys are in the mainframe. You guys are basically the splunk of the mainframe. You have great customers, they trust you. You operationalize and modernize a lot of the things. But what's the big deal, the big trend in your world right now? Is it mobile infrastructure connecting to the mainframe? Is it app uh, latency? Obviously Splunk brings up a value proposition that's obvious, right? Hey, I want real time data yeah. <laughs> going through the mainframe. It's, it's, uh, it's, your, it's your market. So share with the folks out there, sync sort, mainframe, Splunk, the value proposition. Final word. Our, we have over 50% uh, of the ZOS market. I mean, uh, our sort product first sold in 1971 to a, a bank in, in uh, North Carolina. It was called First Computer Services. They sent us a check for $5,000 and a signed contract. That First Computer Services was uh, the, the, the bank, the First National Bank in North Carolina, which is now Wells Fargo. <laughs> As it goes up the chain. How much COBOL you guys still write? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got customers for a long, long time. And they trust us to help them save money. So we have products that, that uh, where we push processing onto IBM Zip engines. So we, we have uh, several thousand licenses uh, for main mainframe licenses. And so they're looking for us to come out with more and more products that have to do with how can you save me money? The Splunk opportunity is not only, you know, now you're giving me an opportunity to, to leverage my mainframe data, and I know that you're a, meaning us, SyncSort, are trusted, reliable, great customer service, and because in this sales cycle, you have to convince the mainframe guy, it's okay to, to tr entrust what's <laughs> going on here because I have a CICS DB2 uh, application, it's got to meet its SLAs. Yeah, yeah. and the kicks is that's been around for a while. But I love their story. I love talking to the sync sort guys. Great team, fun to talk to. But I got to ask you, what's five thousand dollars worth today by <laughs> 1974 standards? <laughs> that's a pretty big check. And, you know, and there was no bill pay back then. Well, the Wells Fargo's got great bill pay. What? I mean, that's that's a good. That's a great deal. So what does that equate to today? Ballpark it for me. Five grand. I would say. I would say that that license today now. The MIPS they were using then <laughs> is a lot less than the MIPS they're using today, but that would be maybe $75,000, $100,000 today. Nice. Well, great story. Love that. I love how you weave that in there. Love the telling the story. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate it. Co-founder of SyncSort, a great company. If you don't know them, they own the mainframe, trusted, trusted partners, um, doing great work. And obviously, they're involved in big data, really modernizing and bringing that equipment up a notch and staying relevant and, and staying right. with great staying power. The mainframe has proven to withstand anything and it's great staying power, thanks to you guys. So, we are live here in Las Vegas, this is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back after this short break.